Hi chemists. Welcome to your choice in the dimensional analysis section of your unit menu. This is Ms. Raz and I am going to work with you today on how to perform dimensional analysis calculations. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain what dimensional analysis is and how it is used in chemistry, use the appropriate conversion factors to modify base units, and solve multi-step conversions using dimensional analysis. Throughout the course of this video, you are going to be asked to perform some calculations. So make sure that number one, you are taking notes, and number two, you have your calculator handy. Let's get started. Dimensional analysis is just a fancy way to talk about a method that we use to convert units. It uses something called conversion factors. The good news is you know a lot of conversion factors already. So for example, you know that 60 minutes equal an hour or 24 hours equals one day, 100 centimeters equals one meter, and 12 inches equal one foot. Even in terms of mass, 16 ounces equals one pound. There are some important measurement prefixes that you need to know. But before we get into those, remember we can modify these base units by using these prefixes. So base units would be, for example, the mass, determining the mass of something, and the base unit in chemistry we often use is grams. To measure the volume of liquids, for example, we often use the base unit liters, and to measure the length of something, we often use meters. As I mentioned, we can modify these base units by attaching prefixes. So let's talk about some major prefixes that you'll want to know. The first one is mega. It has the symbol capital M. The meaning is one million. How you write the conversion factor that relates mega, for example, in this case, meters, we would say one mega meter equals a million meters. Next up is kilo. Kilo has the symbol lowercase k. It means 1,000. And to write this conversion factor, we would say one kiloliter equals 1,000 liters. Notice from the last two examples, I used meters and liters as base units. Remember, these base units are interchangeable. So whether it's kiloliters or kilograms or kilometers, kilo still means 1,000. Then we head over to deci. So deci has the symbol lowercase d. It means tenth. And to write the conversion factor, you have a couple ways to write it, but I prefer to write it this way, where I have one meter equals 10 decimeters. Centis up next, that means hundredth, and one liter equals 100 centiliters. We have milli, that means thousandth, and one gram equals 1,000 milligrams. And then micro is teeny tiny. It has the symbol mu. It looks like a U, but has a hook in front. And this means one times 10 to the minus six, or millions. And so we would say one meter equals one times 10 to the six micrometers. I want to take note of the fact that on the top, you've got the, B, the big prefixes, and on the bottom, you've got the small prefixes. And if you're a visual learner like me, this tends to really help students understand the relationships between these two things. So just take a mental picture of this. The other thing that helps my students is always put the one with the bigger unit. So if I kind of go back here, you can clearly see that in this case, we have the um, mega, right? One megameter. Mega is a large prefix. It's bigger than the base unit. So I put the one with the megameter and that it means it takes a lot more meters to equal one megameter. Conversely, these are the smaller prefixes. So it takes a lot more decimeters to equal one meter. Let's talk about the steps for dimensional analysis. These are the steps that I find most helpful with my students and that's why I'm sharing it with you because often students read these questions and they're like, I don't know where to start. So the first step is to write the K and the U. The K is what you know and the U is what you're trying to find. The second step is to write out your plan. So you write out the units you are converting from and to and the conversion factors. The third step is to write your known and put it over one. And your fourth step is to write a multiplication sign and a line. The fifth step is to write your known units in the denominator. 
So these are some suggested steps, especially because you're just starting out to convert units. Now, my students typically won't do all of these steps all the time, but since you're just starting out, I recommend making sure that you do every single one of these steps. And then when it gets easier, you may not have to do as many. Here's an example. We want to know how many centimeters are in 2.7 meters. So we're going to follow the steps. We're going to take our known, which is what we have in the problem, the number in the unit, 2.7 meters. And our unknown is question mark how many centimeters. The next step is to write out the plan. So the plan includes the units that we're converting from and to. So in this case, we're going from meters into centimeters. And the conversion that we know, and remember we're going to put one with the bigger unit, is we know that centimeters or centi means hundredth. hundredth. So what that means is it's going to take 100 centimeters to equal one meter. Next, we'll take our known and we'll put it over one. Then we'll draw our multiplication sign and our line. And remember, the known units have to go in the denominator. So what that means is, since we have meters up here, that means that meters has to go down here. Well, the question is, well, how many meters? Well, that's where our conversion factor comes in. So that's why we're going to put one meter on bottom and 100 centimeters on top. Perfect. And then the really cool thing about dimensional analysis is, right, we've got meters over meters. Well, think about if you're in math class. If you had x over x, guess what? Those two things divide out. So these units should divide out or cancel out to leave the unit that you want. So this is centimeters, and that's exactly what we want. The next thing we have to do is do our multiplication, and we get 270 centimeters. The other thing that I want to mention is that with significant figures, typically the sig figs are based off of the number that you're starting with. The reason why is because remember we said that these conversion factors are often considered exact numbers, so they won't limit your sig figs. So base your sig figs off of the known. So that's why since we've got two here, we're going to have two in our answer. So that's your very first dimensional analysis problem. Let's try another one. So this question says, how many feet are equal to 54.7 inches? Follow along again. We've got the known and we've got the unknown. Next comes the plan. So we're trying to go from inches into feet. And we do know a, we do know a conversion factor that we can do that with. So we know that 12 inches equal a foot. Then we'll take our known and put it over one. Draw our multiplication sign in our line. Again, we've got inches on top. And if we look at this conversion factor, we can see that we have 12 inches here. So that means 12 inches has to go on the bottom, right? It has to go diagonal in order for these units to cancel. So that means we're going to put 12 inches on bottom and one foot on top. Then we said that inches and inches divide out. And then just watch your math here because I tell my students, whatever's on top, you have to multiply, but whatever's on bottom, you have to divide. So if I were typing this into my calculator, I would do 54.7 times 1 and then divide it by 12. And that's where you get 4.56 feet. This is an example of a two-step problem. So this question says, how many kilograms are equal to 45,000 milligrams? So just like usual, we've got our known and our unknown. The plan is going to look a little different. The reason why is because if we think back to the conversion factors we learned, we do not have a conversion factor that directly goes from milligrams into kilograms. However, we do have conversion factors that go from milligrams into grams and from grams into kilograms. So that's why the plan is now going to have two steps here. So we're going to go from milligrams into grams and then from grams into kilograms. The way we'll do that is by using 1,000 milligrams equal a gram and then 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. So this is an example of a two-step problem because you've got two conversion factors, just like you see over there. So we'll take our known, we'll put it over one. Again, we need to have milligrams cancel. The only way to do that is to put it diagonally, right? It has to be over milligrams. So the way that we do that is we're going to plug in a thousand milligrams and then one gram on top. And then milligrams and milligrams divide out. Perfect. If we solve the problem right now, our answer would be in grams. However, notice our unknown is in kilograms. So we have to keep going and that's where we'll do this next conversion factor. 
So we'll draw our multiplication sign in our line. Since we have grams on top, that means that we have to put grams on bottom. So that means 1,000 grams is going to go on bottom, and then one kilogram is going to go on top. Grams and grams divide out. We're left with kilograms. This is looking awesome. One other thing to keep in mind when you're doing your math here, right? We've got 45,000 on top, and then we're going to do times one, and then times one. But then you also have to divide by whatever's on bottom. So make sure when you type this in, it'll be 45,000 divided by 1,000. And then you actually have to hit the division sign again and divide by 1,000 again. So just be mindful of that because a lot of students tend to forget to divide twice. So when you get your answer, it should be 0 0.045 kilograms. Whenever you go from a prefix to another prefix, like in this case, we're going from milligrams into kilograms, this will always have two conversion factors. You have to go through the base unit in order to do this. Here's another example. This question says, how many seconds are in 1.50 weeks? So we've got our known and we've got our unknown. We're going to go from weeks to days, and then from days to hours, and then hours to minutes, and then minutes to seconds. Notice how many conversion factors we have here. One, two, three, four. Wow. So one week will equal seven days, one day equals 24 hours, one hour equals 60 minutes, and one minute equals 60 seconds. Let's take our known and put it over one. We'll draw a multiplication sign. So we've got weeks on top, that means we need week on bottom. So it's gonna be one week equals seven days. Weeks and weeks cancel. We've got one day equals 24 hours. Days and days cancel. One hour equals 60 minutes. Hours and hours cancel. And then one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Minutes and minutes cancel. So you're going to multiply everything on top and divide by everything on bottom. So your answer should be 907,000 seconds. So this is an example of a much longer problem with many more conversion factors. There are two new conversion factors that you may need to use. Um, one inch equals 2.54 centimeters and one mile equals 5,280 feet. This isn't particularly helpful if you have to go from the English to the metric system or vice versa. So here's an example using those conversion factors. So it says the Empire State Building is approximately 381 meters high. How many miles high is the Empire State Building? So we'll take our known and our unknown. We'll do our plan. And in this problem, it looks like we'll have four conversion factors. So that's the first one, that's the second one, that's the third one, and that's the fourth one. So this one is actually using both of those new conversion factors. So once we got into centimeters here, the conversion that relates centimeters to inches is the one that we just learned on the previous slide. And in order to go from feet into miles, we learned that one also on the previous slide. So you can see a lot of the work is done here for us, which is kind of nice because now we just have to plug it in. So we'll take 381 meters over one. We have to get meters on bottom, so it'll be one meter to 100 centimeters. And then we'll go from 2.54 centimeters to one inch. And then 12 inches equals one foot. And then 5,280 feet equals one mile. Be careful here again, make sure that you multiply by everything on top. So it would be 381 times 100 and then times 1. And then you want to hit division sign 2.54, division sign 12, and division sign 5,280 feet. And you should get 0.237 miles. One final note that I need to talk with you about is the fact that a lot of students think that the most important thing is that you can get the right answer. And while it's nice to get the right answer, more than likely your teacher is more concerned with you showing the work correctly. Dimensional analysis is the method that we are going to use all year to solve chemistry problems and to convert in between units. 
while you can, for example, just move the decimal point, like maybe you learned in middle school, that is not the point of this. So I want to remind you that you are not going to be given credit, most likely, for any problems not done using dimensional analysis. So please try to keep in mind it's about showing the work, not necessarily getting the right answer. Thank you so much for watching. As always, keep practicing, and I know you'll do really great on your summative assessment.